In this video, we're going to learn what are interfaces in C Sharp. This is an excellent feature that helps us write cleaner, more reusable code by defining a set of methods that we can then implement in various classes. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. So interfaces are one of the main features of C-sharp and writing object-oriented code. Essentially, they allow you to define functions and properties, but without any implementation. The interface works as a contract. It ensures that when a class implements that interface, they must implement those functions. This allows you to have several different classes that can be used the same way by using a common interface. And you don't care what else that class is doing. Maybe it's a tiny class that only has the interface functions implemented, or maybe it's a mega class with a thousand lines of code. When you use it as an interface, you can guarantee that it will have those functions regardless of what the rest of the class is doing. All right, so let's check out some basic code first, and then we're going to look at a practical example of how we can use interfaces so that our player here can shoot both the enemy, the building, and the crate. This video's Patreon sponsor is Bad Adventure. Bad Adventurer is a game development duo currently working on their first game, Wayfarer's Edge. It's a RPG focused on exploring and settling unknown frontier lands in a low fantasy and wild west theme. Check them out at badadventurer.com. Thank you to the Patreon sponsor, and thank you to these awesome supporters for making this video possible. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. So here we are in an empty script. Now the first thing we need is to define our interface. Now we can define it in a separate file, or in this case just write it in here. So first we write our accessor, so let's make this our public. And then instead of using the class keyword, we use the interface keyword. Then we write the name for our interface. Now standard practice is to start the name of an interface always with an I. So in this case, let's name it I my interface. And that's it. Just like this, we have our interface definition. Now inside our interface, we can define a function. And now normally when defining a function inside of a class, you would do something like this. But this is an interface and not a class. So first of all, in an interface, you don't define an accessor. By default, all of the interface elements are public. So get rid of the private. Then we have our return value. So in this case, void is correct. Then the name of our function. And finally, the parameters. Then again, the interfaces do not have any implementation, so we get rid of the entire code block and just put a semicolon. One side note here, in C Sharp 8, they add the ability to add a default implementation. So if you're using C Sharp 8, you can actually define an implementation of your method that will be used if the implementing class does not define that method. This allows you to add extra methods to the interface without breaking existing classes. However, C Sharp 8 is still very new and not yet supported in Unity, so in this video, I'll stick to not using default implementations. But if you're watching this in the future and C Sharp 8 is the standard, then default implementation is yet another useful feature of interfaces. Okay, so just like this, we have defined a method in our interface. We don't define the accessor since by default, everything in an interface is public, and we don't define any implementation. So now let's see how we get a class to implement this interface. Down here, let's define our class. So let's make it a public class, my class. And now here we add a colon and then our interface, I my interface. And just like this, we can see that we have an error. Since we are implementing this interface, we are required to implement all of the functions defined in this interface. So let's do just that. First of all, the accessor, which again with interfaces, it must be a public. Then the function signature, so void test function and with no parameters. And now finally, we implement our method body. Just like this. Okay, so now we have this class which correctly implements our interface. Now let's try it out. Let's go up here for our testing. And first let's instantiate the new my class. So we have an instance of my class. And now let's make a function that has a parameter of our interface type. So this function receives a parameter of type I my interface. And then here when we access my interface, you can see that we have the interface function right here. 
So we call the function on the interface. And now up here, after we have instantiated our class, we can now use our test interface function. And here it expects a I my interface object, and we can pass in my class since my class does implement that interface. Okay, so let's test running out this code and see what happens. And yep, there it is, we have our my class test function log. So it correctly printed our message. So up here we created an instance of my class, then we're passing in my class as a parameter of type my interface, and then we're using the interface to call the interface function which is calling the function on the class that implements our interface and running this line of code. Again, interfaces are a contract, so that means you must implement those functions. And you can also have multiple classes implementing the same interface, but with different implementations. So let's try it out and make another class. And here we're also going to implement I my interface. And now up here, let's create an instance of my second class. And we call the same test interface and pass in my second class. So we have a function which receives a my interface and in here we're sending it with two different object types. And if we test, and yep, there it is. Both of our classes implement the same interface so we can call the same function on both of them, but they implement the interface in different ways so we get different results. Awesome. So here we define a simple interface method. Now inside of our interfaces, we can also define properties. So for example, int my int, then with the get and with set. So here we have a simple property. However, we cannot define fields. So then this, and you can see interfaces cannot contain fields. Now another thing we can define are events. So just like that. So these are all the things that you can define in an interface. You can define functions and events, and you can define properties but not fields. Now in terms of implementing an interface, it can be done with a class like we saw in here, but we can also implement our interfaces in structs in the exact same way. One of the most useful things about interfaces is how you can implement several interfaces. When dealing with inheritance, one of the main limitations is how you can only inherit from a single base class. However, with interfaces, you do not have that limitation. So here we can define a second interface. And over here on this class, we can implement I my interface and also I my second interface. So just like that. Yet another limitation of C-sharp is how structs cannot inherit from a base class, but again, structs can implement interfaces. Also, an interface can implement another interface. So for example, I can make IMI interface implement the second interface. And now down here, when I implement just IMI interface, you see that I have to implement also the other function. So this means that whatever class implements the final interface, it must also implement everything else defined in this one and in this one. All right, so here we looked at the theory behind interfaces. Now let's check out a practical scenario. Okay, so here I am in a nice scene. I have my player character that I can move around. Over here is an enemy character and over here is a crate. Now I can left click in order to shoot some bullets. And now what I want is for the bullets to damage both of these objects. Here in the scene, you can see both objects and you can see that they are both completely different. So this is an enemy with the enemy script and this is a crate with a crate script. These two classes are completely separate. They don't share any base class or anything. So this is where interfaces are extremely useful. Let's look at how the scripts are set up. Over here in the project files, we have a bullet, a enemy, and a crate script. Let's inspect the bullet. There it is, all it has is this. The bullet works by using physics, so it gets fired, and here we're checking for collisions. So it's in here that we want to cause some damage if we hit a valid object. Then over here on the enemy script, we already have a very nice damage function and the crate has one as well. Now for this type of shooting a bullet and testing for the hits, I covered this in a previous video, so check the link in the description if you haven't seen it yet. And now back in the bullet script, over here we can identify what type of object we hit. So we go into our collider and we do a get component and let's see if it's an enemy. So we do get component and if enemy is not null, then we have hit a enemy. 
So it is just like that. And then we can do the exact same thing for our crate. So collider get component of type crate. And just like this. So by looking at this code, you can probably guess where we're going with this, but let's test. Okay, so here we are and I can shoot my bolts and if I aim towards the enemy and shoot and yep, there you go, we have a nice hit. And over here is a crate, aim and shoot and yep, there you go, I've hit the crate. Okay, so we have our code working. We can actually damage both types of objects. But now let's say we want to add another object type, something like a building. Doing it this way would mean that we would have to add all of our possible damaged object types all in here in this function. So eventually this would become a massive horrendous function. So this is where interfaces come in. Instead of copy pasting all of this code for every single object type, what we can do is let's go into the editor and here let's create a new C sharp script and let's call this I damageable. This will represent an object that can be damaged. So inside let's go and make this a interface called I damageable. And all we're going to have is a void damage function. That's it. Very simple. Now let's go into the enemy class. So we have our enemy. We are extending mono behavior. And now let's also implement I damageable. And now we already have the damage function. So we don't actually need to write anything else. And the same thing on our crate. So in here, just implement I damageable. All right. So that's pretty much it. Now, if we go onto our bullet, now instead of having all of this copy pasted code, we're going to go into our collider to get the component of type I damageable. So this will return an object I damageable. So if we have it, then we have hit a damageable object and we can call the damage function on our interface. And that's it. Let's test. Okay, here we are shooting bullets. Let's shoot the enemy. There you go. He got hit. Shoot the crate. And there you go. It got hit. All right. So we can now target both types of objects. And now let's add another object type. So over here, I have a tower and it's holding the tower script. And right now, if I shoot it, you can see nothing happens. Okay. And now I can simply open up the tower script and just add I damageable. And that's it. It already implements that function. And now if you run, so here we are and shoot and yep, there you go. We can now damage the tower. So just like this, we add another object and made it damageable by just implementing a simple interface. And you can also see how the implementation doesn't have to be exactly the same. For example, the enemy here, when I shoot him, he spawns blood particles, but the tower and the crate do not. So over here, you can see a very nice practical use case of how interfaces help you write cleaner, better code. Instead of having lots of copy paste itself, we just made sure that the damage works based on the interface and not on the specific object type. Another recent example is how I used interfaces extensively in the video on making a modular character controller. In that video, each module is defined as an interface then there are various implementations of each interface. So for example, there's an interface to set a target move position and then two classes that implement that interface. One goes directly towards the position and one uses pathfinding. So now that you know the basics of interfaces, go check out that video to see how they can be used. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unity code monkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.